24.6% field goal shooting. Well, you know, the best thing about our defense was in the face of, uh, you know, dejection, adversity, and, you know, we did play backwards to the missed foul shot, and to the miss, you, you know, Cody had so many missed jump shots that were wide open, as did Rob. Mm -hmm. You know, Cassie in that left corner. Uh, but, you know, we, we came back with greater resolve and and channel the anxiety and the disappointment of that into a defensive effort. So that was uh, the tail of the tape. I mean, you know, we didn't, we had a bunch of turnovers on forest in the first half, and then we, I think we only had three two in the second. Three, three. three. Three in the second, so. Yeah. You know, but uh, I told the guys afterwards, I was, I mean, it's imagine I said, if you really took it upon yourself to want to be a good ball shooter and want to stay extra, Come early and they're not like they're good kids, but you know, uh, it's not like we don't shoot enough in practice. I mean, we we shoot them all the time in practice. And and again, like you said the other night, it spreads through the team. You know, it's, tonight they got the tight shorts. The other night one, you know, you're up on mm -hmm. 10, 12, 14, 18 points. You know, you're sailing. And it's all good then. You know. Mm -hmm. They did, though, they did a really good job on uh, Kevin Dillard as opposed to that first game. That was yeah, we made some adjustments from the first game, and, you know, uh, I credit my coaching staff with that. I've got excellent assistant coaches. They do an outstanding job. I mean, I guarantee you tonight they'll be here, and I won't. <laughs> uh, you know, but, I mean, you got you got to admire them. I admire them and respect them. And, well, you know, one of the reasons I love coaching is because I can sit there with those guys and, you know, kind of play – chess and then take take it to a three-dimensional thing on the court but uh, we made some good adjustments you know we could play them again and, you know but we, we did get stretched out we, we, we were absolutely adamant that we're not going to let the previous take a pick and pop three you know we we tried to cushion the ball with, with you know cushion Dillard I mean Dillard I believe his average made it since the game and leads the league it's just, if not yeah. eight he's average yeah. seven yeah so it's yeah. seven or eight in parson on that some of the percentage actually lies somewhere in the middle, but but uh, I like that you won't let me round up. That's good. <laughs> so, uh, but I think they only have like uh, I think they only have like six assists as a team tonight. Yeah. Did they know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So they have six assists as a team, and one guy's averaging seven. You know, so we, you know, the guys executed the game plan and were really committed. They're real committed to their defense. Not getting stretched out, letting Dillard come kick and drag and kick. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, I didn't see the play at the end of the half. It, it, it was just a smart play by Conklin. I don't know if he followed him or not, you know, on that three point shot with a coach got the technical. Mm -hmm. But I sat in his seat and in mine. Yeah. You know, but I applaud Conklin for, you know, having a presence, you know, not to follow him for not letting him shoot an uncontested three. It was a physical, but overall a good night for your bigs, you thought? Yeah, I thought so. I mean, we got their bigs in fall trouble. We went inside. I mean, imagine if you hit our free throws or open shots. Off the end now, I'll tell you how many open shots we had. Cassie in the left corner, Cody in the right corner, Romain in the right. I mean, it's like, a, you know, Rob. I mean, wide open shots, you know. And their teammates do a good job of getting those shots. I don't know if they respect the opportunity, you know. At least Rob did. I think he played backwards offensively. Because he's still, you know, young and immature. But defensively, he did he did a great job today of deployment and of help on his defense. And he didn't let his shooting affect his defense. Now he can't let his shooting missing affect the next shot he takes. You know, that's that's an emotional maturation he's got to go through. You guys lost three out of four there around the new year, and then we talked after the Pardon? after the new year. You lost for three out of four there, and we talked to a couple of players after the Temple game. They talked about how important it was right there to kind of get it turned around. You've now won five out of six. I'm just yeah, I know. I never. I ask the guy. I'm such a simpleton. I never. I never see it that way. Someone, my birthday's coming up, and someone's asked me about my birthday. I said, I don't want. To, I don't want to know if we're playing. I don't want to know who we play. I don't give a shit about my birthday. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like you know, my whole deal is just focus on this as best we can. I got a good group of guys. Hoffman and Cassie are exemplary leaders. They're great kids. Like at the end of the half, they're top and said, you know, came to me and said, you want to take that shot? You want to run all the time off? And it was a good call, 
and I didn't have quite have confidence in the guys we had out there to run time off. And uh, you know, but but I and then we I did take I did take Cassie's suggestion. But I mean beyond looking at like this is the game we won today, so today we move forward. You know, like, we're off tomorrow. We got a good practice, and I know you know I do know the next game is in Philadelphia because I know we got to fly there for a week. How do you look at the? I mean, the, this may be the same answer, but I mean, yeah, I don't look at it. I honestly doubt I don't. And again, I've won conference championships in a couple of different leagues. I've won at least a dozen, and I've looked at it exactly that way. And I'm not bragging right now. I'm just saying that's the approach I've always had. You know, I mean, I don't, you can't have the luxury of looking beyond, you know, I mean, I, I can hardly wait to look at this film with my coaches. I'm not going to do that tonight, but, you know, and, uh, but, you know, we, we got good shots, we played good defense, we missed our foul shots, it was abysmal. I mean, uh, you know, I, I really, really uh, am beside myself with their foul shooting, and I think some of them are. Well, so in the last, you made three of the last four free throws. So well, you, you know, like, yeah. first of all, they're technical, so yeah. you might, but you know, we're missing the double bonus. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't miss, like Dwayne missed that in the double bonus, you know, we're missing in the bonus. Mm -hmm. When, you know, like, when we lost at UMass, we missed five free throws in the bonus, five of the first shots in the bonus. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, now, now you're taking away five points, certainly, that you missed, and mm -hmm. the possibility of ten, and Say you're only a 60% shooting team, well, like at least you're shooting 60% of the games, mm -hmm. you know. And now, now we're should we come away from that experience with zero. Mm -hmm. you know? Mike's coming on. You, you, you've given him more minutes lately. Uh, you know how the calls play. And he's playing better D. He, you know, he recognizes his mistakes. He's, he's embracing criticism as, you know. Uh, a, a way to get better, you know. He, that's that's a big thing for him. You know, he, he way too. These guys are, you know, immature guys. Mm -hmm. You know, Conklin has an unbelievable maturity. But then again, Conklin's a senior, mm -hmm. and probably if I was getting married in July, I'd have a real maturity from <laughs> the 25 years old. You know, but but you know, I, I love Cassie and his, and. What he gives us his attitude, and you know what? I, Cody had been missing there. I knew I was going to get a wide open shot for him. Cassie got that wide open shot in the left corner there, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, I figured, what the hell am I going to call his number? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and Cody hadn't done anything for us. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, you know, I ride the guy who's hot. We had a couple of nice plays that we could have run to get threes, but we can't run them. You know, Rob, Rob, and Cody. You know, mm -hmm. so if we get, that's a big thing we got to work on beginning Monday. I mean, we have a lot of issues. It's sort of a lot of other teams. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a lot of issues, but you're 18 and five, and six and three in the in the league. Yeah. So tonight's a nice night. That's mm -hmm. it. I told mm -hmm. go home tonight, enjoy it, and come back. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank the fans, the students in particular, were sensational, and really a great student section. And and the band is always top notch. But you know it's. I don't know why, if you like basketball, why you, might, why you wouldn't want to come. These teams are all good. We've got good guys and student athletes. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. The only thing I can see is parking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Melting ahead, but you do have the Philadelphia trip. You told me a couple weeks ago that that's the worst trip. Well, I don't know if it's the worst trip. No, it's, it's the hardest trip. trip. Well, here's, why, here's why it's the hardest trip. Because, again, you know, the number one thing I respect is these guys and their academic endeavor. Mm -hmm. Now we're missing five, six days of school. I mean, how many days of school we missed? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I asked for the trip in one because we missed the same amount of school. We might actually miss one less day going out. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, then when we could have stayed an extra half a day, we couldn't get a plane out to UMass. So now we're flying out to UMass at like 9 in the morning or 10 in the morning and missing all that class. We could have flown out at you know two in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and you know I just think that this is an academic endeavor. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, everybody has their own. I was that George Bush gentleman C student in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know whether you're that guy or you're, you know, those couple of those brilliant kids we have. I mean, brilliant, Cassidy, Cotton, 
Dwayne, those kind of guys. Um, you know, you, you deserve an opportunity. You know, we're going to take a tutor with us, mm -hmm. but and the kids will try hard. I'll have study hall, mm -hmm. but you know, I just, I just can't. You know, but it's good. The whole, the whole thing's going that way. You know, it's amazing in Division One now. If you're going to imagine West Virginia's flying down to Texas mm -hmm. four times, but not only that, their soccer team, their women's team, it, it, it's a big joke in the NCAA in terms of we're going to turn the volume down, the money. The money grab, the, the the lessening of academics, you know, I mean, it's all a facade. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really cared about these kids' and academics, you'd do. You know, and, I, and here's what you should do: this will clean it all up in one minute. You can only give as many scholarships as you have kids graduate. I've always been a proponent, with the exception of a kid turning pro. Any kid that turns pro nowadays, that's a ten million dollar windfall. Mm -hmm. You know, so that God bless that kid. Don't even count him right Give him a hug and hope he gives you 10%. <laughs> <laughs> but but other than those kids, mm -hmm. you know, now there could be a kid transfer. And sometimes you take a kid who just has no interest in school. Absolutely none. And sometimes there's a maturity level. I mean, they, they, I didn't have anything to do with it because he doesn't want to see me at all. But the people here, Janet, number one, and the rest of them have gotten Liddell back in school. And now he's finding out, hey, this is the real world. This is what I missed out when I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. And we made him, at least in the two years I had him, but then as soon as uh, basketball ended that year, boom, he was off. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, you know they, they live in these delusional worlds of, you know, mm -hmm. of, uh, and it's sad. I mean, that kid from Butler last year doesn't get drafted, and a kid from Bahrain is drafted 55. I mean, there's got, a guy from the Arab Emirates. I mean, you know, Christ, he's drafted, and the kid from Butler's not. Mm -hmm. You know you know what kid I'm talking about? That big white kid is so good. Matt Howard. Matt Howard, yeah. I mean, imagine I drafted Matt Howard. But again, this year there's going to be, you know, my buddy in China, I, I got some contacts there. The problem is these kids can't speak English. I mean, he's got like a couple guys with him, but, you know, I can't, the kid can't speak English. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care, I said, I tried to explain them, I don't care how good they are. <laughs> they can't speak English. <laughs> Yeah. You know, we're an English university. <laughs> Although we do have a lot of Chinese guys here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing the Chinese population we have. Thank, uh, any other questions? Yeah, who's going to win tomorrow? Who said that on? Oh, I don't even know. You know I, I don't want to watch no more. I'll watch on and off. I'll look at our film more than anything, and I'll just take a day off. But I'm not a big, you know, like I, I kind of like the Packers a little bit.